Right, um, it's lesson... I'll turn the light on, that will help, won't it? I can see now. Right, um, it's lesson 19, Are Jehovah's Witnesses Real Christians? Um, the introduction on page 79. Uh, are you there or do you want me to read it to you? Can you hear me? Hang on a second. Yeah. I'm, I'm Robert, by the way. Robin? Robert. Robert, all right, OK. Pleased to meet you. And you're, I remember I left a message at Seacroft Congregation, yes, in Leeds. That's correct. That's correct. Yes. yes, that's right, yes. OK. By the way, I'm expecting a call any time from a friend, so if I have to hang up suddenly, I'm not being rude, we can finish the conversation some other time, but it's quite an important call from a friend. I hope you understand. Okay. Thank okay. you. Um, are you. Are you there at the page 79, lesson 19? I am, yes. Yeah, the introduction says, As Jehovah's Witnesses, we believe that we are real Christians. Why? Consider the basis for our beliefs, the name that sets us apart, and the love we have for one another. Um, is the book saying that only Jehovah's Witnesses are real Christians, or do you believe there are real Christians in other groups? I used to go to a Baptist and a Pentecostal church. Um, you know, there's lots of apostasy in various religious groups, but I do believe there are genuine Christians in all of the groups, albeit a tiny minority. Do you believe Jehovah's Witnesses are the only real Christians or are they real Christians in other groups? Do you believe that Jehovah's Witnesses are the only real Christians? Yes. So you would believe that all the other groups are false or apostate or there's no real Christians in say the Baptist or the Pentecostals or the Methodists? Well, look, before, before we go into deep conversations about yes. these, these matters, um, I think probably I ought to find out whether you're actually studying with someone at the moment. No, 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 but I, I've been reading your book, Enjoy Life Forever, for quite some time. Um, it's, it's on the website, jw.org. It is, yes, but uh, you, you'll, you'll have noticed that we invite people to study the Bible with us um, in, in that particular book. So if I can arrange for someone to study the Bible, we study with you from the beginning, I'd be happy to arrange that. Aren't we studying the Bible now? Oh, you're asking me a question and I'm making a suggestion to you. Right, but, but aren't we discussing the book now? I, isn't that what, what we're doing? <clears throat> uh, no, you're asking me some questions about a chapter in the book. Right. I'm suggesting that it would be better for you to start a study with one of Jehovah's Witnesses, an experienced brother, um, and uh, start from the beginning and take it I step by step. I don't want to start from the beginning. I, my time is limited. Um, I'm, I've looked at, there's various chapters in the book I find interesting. That's what I've been focusing on. I don't have to study from the beginning if I don't want to, do I? Just it's as, entirely up to you, but yeah. then I, in that case, I would invite you to come to one of our Kingdom Hall meetings. I don't go to religious meetings. I used to go to an evangelical church, but I gave up many years ago. I don't go to religious meetings anymore. Well, we're going to have difficulty, aren't we? Because I, we, I can't really go through these, uh, this subject in any detail over the phone with you. So um, uh, I'm not quite sure where we can go with this at this moment. OK. I mean, why not? Why can't you discuss the book over the phone? Um, well, simply because I've had conversations like this with either you or somebody else in the past, and uh, I, I find that the person is either apostate or opposed to Jehovah's Witnesses, and I'm just wasting my time with them. And I'm just afraid that's the situation here. OK, well, I'm reading the book. Um, I'm finding the book interesting. I've never been a Jehovah's Witness. Um, wouldn't a real Christian be somebody who is indwelt by the Holy Spirit? There's a test of uh, who is a true Christian at 2 Corinthians 13.5. Um, wouldn't that be a, a good test of who is the true Christian and who is the false Christian? Do you mind if I read the verse, uh, please? By all means. Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Prove yourself. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified. 
So Christ actually indwells the bodies of true Christians. And if Christ does not indwell a person, then the Bible is here saying they're disqualified. They're, they're, they're not a real Christian. They're, a, they're either not a Christian at all or they're a false Christian. Okay. Um, so the, what point are you making? That Christ has to indwell the body of a true believer. Obviously not, not Christ's physical body. Christ's divine spirit indwells as do the Father and the Holy Spirit, the bodies of true Christians. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, in his N in the Greek, Epsilon Nu, well, you, unless you, indeed you, you are disqualified? Just defined, you, you've just been explaining things in terms of the Trinity to me, and you know we don't accept the Trinity, so where are we going with this? Well, I haven't mentioned the word Trinity, I just said that Christ is in you. you, you the, the, the word... Yes, but you, you've referred to the relationships between them already just now. Okay, is that a crime? To talk about the relationship between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? I'm, the, I'm, not, I'm uh, not into discussing whether things are crimes or not. And I think at this particular point, I'm going to conclude the conversation. If you would like to discuss this with further with Jehovah, Jehovah's Witnesses, please invite one of our brothers to come to your home and discuss it with you. I'll, I'll, leave, it, I'll leave that thought with you at the moment. Thanks what are you afraid of? What are you so afraid of? You're clearly afraid. Oh, he's, he's hung up. I am asking my subscribers to please help me with this work. I'm a very poor guy. I'm not asking for money. But I cannot afford to phone outside of the UK. And please don't email me with schemes for me to do this and that and the other and get this account and that account. I cannot, cannot phone outside of the UK. I don't have the money to do that. However, I can Zoom outside of the UK for free. So if you wish to help me with this work, and I need help, because it's getting more and more difficult for English congregations to speak to me, because so many of them have been warned about me, all you need to do is go to jw.org, then scroll down to find us to attend a meeting. Click on the box for attend a meeting, and then in the bottom left, you'll see find a location near you. Click on that and you'll see a map of where you live. Now, you can type at the top of the page uh, a different location anywhere in the world. So you click on which location you want and then you um, click on one of those uh, orange circles or you go to the left hand side of the page more information and click on that then you have to phone these people up remember I cannot I absolutely cannot phone outside of the UK and by the way I'd love to get the Isle of Man the Republic of Ireland and the islands of Guernsey and Jersey but even though Jersey, Guernsey and the Isle of Man are outside the UK. I can't um, phone them because they, they're on a different, um, different they're, they're not on the traditional UK phone system. They're treated as international calls. So phone them up and ask for the details. Now, I'd rather have one detail that's clear than 20 details that are vague. Because if it's vague, I'm going to just dismiss it. I, I cannot say, well, this is a bit vague. I'll give them a ring. I'll give, you know, this congregation 5,000 miles away a ring. I can't do that. I cannot ring outside of the UK. So all you need to do is to ring them up, say, hello, I'd like to attend a meeting on Zoom. Get the Zoom details. I need the name of the congregation accurately the town accurately, the state, don't use abbreviations. Is this, if it's in uh, the US, I probably will know that TX means Texas, CA means California, but write it out in full, make it clear. If it's in a country uh, like Australia or New Zealand or Canada, I, I, I wouldn't have a clue about the states, so don't use abbreviations. And include the exact time of the Zoom meeting, Sunday and midweek, and what is the time zone 
for that congregation. It's no good saying, hey, you know, 10 o'clock on Sunday. If I don't know where the congregation is, I don't know what time zone they're on. Um, these contacts would be much appreciated, but I'd rather have one or two than, than 20 that are vague. Be, be precise and be clear and be accurate. And they can be in non-English speaking countries. You could get me an English congregation in Spain or an English congregation in Italy or an English congregation in Brazil. That would be fine. In fact, they'd probably like to hear from me, wouldn't they? Because I'm an English speaker. Um, but please don't get me the names of... Um, don't get me Polish congregations in America or... or you know, French or German or Polish or Spanish congregations, that's of no help to me. Um, but I am asking for help with this work because I really cannot continue this work in the UK. It's getting far too difficult. Thank you very much.